won't be sick, and they're staying home so that you won't be sick. And that's a kind thing that we are doing for each other right now. And I just want to tell you how brave you are and how special and important you are. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for choosing to spend some of your time at home with me here at Food Literacy Center. We are going to cook and we're going to learn and hopefully it will be fun and bring you some joy today. So I want to talk about um, our lesson. So today we're going to make something called a sun butter sandwich. And when we're at Food Literacy Center, um, one of the biggest things we ask of you, and we've already talked about this, is that you be brave. And so being brave is important because we want you to become what we call a food adventurer. And that's a big word. You might even want to write it down. Food adventurer. So what is an adventurer? And what's a food adventurer? When we think of adventurers, those are people who explore, right? And they like to have new experiences. And so a food adventurer is somebody that is very brave and likes to try new foods. And that can be a really fun experience as you become more of an adventurer. So put your food adventurer hat on or at Food Literacy Center, we say that an apron is just a superhero cape worn backwards. So sometimes it's my cape, today it's my apron. So we're gonna be food adventurers and we're gonna be brave and we're gonna try some new things together and we're gonna learn about it. And as we go, hopefully you'll find some new favorites. So uh, parents, you can find our lessons on our website at foodliteracycenter.org and then look for the curriculum button. So at the top. So when you get there, you will see our lesson plan and it has all the things that you need to help with uh, today's lesson. So one of those things that we will be talking about is, um, so the first piece is our lesson plan. And this is for the parents so that you can help your child to walk through this lesson. And we tried to make it really simple and really fun and really easy for you. So we included a list of supplies, and we'll go over those. Those are here on my table. We try to keep it really simple and use things that you probably have in stock at home in your pantry. And then we also have our recipe. And this also can be printed from that website. So we're learning a new word, recipe. You guys can write that down. Let's say it together. Recipe. So a recipe is basically the instructions for how to make food. So today we're making something that you've probably made before, but you probably haven't used a recipe or instructions for it. So who out there has made a peanut butter sandwich before? Probably a lot of you. I've made a peanut butter sandwich before and I didn't always follow a recipe the first time I made it. I just made it up. So today we're going to learn why it's important to use a recipe. And so we're going to go through it together. So um, the title of the recipe is the big words at the top. That's the title. And so that tells you what it is that we're cooking today. We're making a sunflower seed butter and seasonal fruit sandwich or a peanut butter sandwich that's fancy. <laughs> so then it tells you how many things the recipe cooks. Yield one sandwich. So we're just going to make enough for one. If you wanted to make enough for four, there's some math. So you would need to have the ingredients four different times. You would make and not just one, but you would make it four times. Then you have your ingredients. So let's look for our ingredients together. So it says we need two slices of whole wheat bread. Well, I have bread here. Here's my whole wheat bread. You can use any type of bread that you have at home. It doesn't have to be whole wheat. We like to use whole wheat because it's a grain and it has fiber and that's really good for our bodies. So I have my bread. Hopefully you can find the bread that you have at your, in your kitchen. Now we're gonna need two tablespoons and we'll talk about what a tablespoon is of sunflower seed butter. And um, so we're going to use um, this, whoops, it's called sunflower seed butter. And it's basically the same as a 
peanut butter or almond butter, but instead of being made with nuts, we are making it with seeds. So sunflower seed is not a nut, so if you have nut allergies, then you could use that and you would be safe from those allergies. So, um, and then my special assistant is going to hand me some measuring spoons because I forgot them. <laughs> uh, but hopefully you also have some. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And then we're going to make fresh fruit slices. So today I have apples. Maybe you have a banana at home. You could also even use something like raisins. That is a fun thing to put on your sandwich. And the reason we're using fresh fruit slices instead of jelly, does anybody have an idea why? Maybe you could talk with the parent in your room about why you think we would use fresh fruit instead of jelly. Jelly has something in it that is very sweet. Can you think of the word? Starts with an S, sugar. And so we wanna make sure that we're eating a little less sugar and a little more fresh vegetables and fruits. And so although apples are sweet and they do have sugar, they also have something really healthy for us called fiber. And at Food Literacy Center, we love fruits and vegetables. And we have a saying here that you should eat a fruit or vegetable with every snack and meal. So now we're taking something that you already make at home, a peanut butter sandwich, but we're gonna add a fruit to that. So it makes it a bit healthier for you. So now we're gonna walk through. There's instructions for adults here so that you can do that with your family. Um, and then there's instructions for kids in our recipe. So we're going to follow those instructions because what could happen if you don't follow the instructions on a recipe, you might start making it and then realize halfway through that you forgot your measuring spoons. So this is why we read the recipe first um, so that we understand what we're about to do and that we make sure that we have all of our ingredients in front of us. So uh, with an adult, you can read the first instruction. So we're gonna place one slice of bread on a plate. I'm gonna use my cutting board. So I'm placing one slice. Um, why one slice? I, don't I use two slices for a sandwich? I think maybe we'll find the other slice later in the instructions. That's my hope. Okay, so now we're gonna use a butter knife to spread two tablespoons, and we know how much from our ingredient list, that it's two tablespoons of the sun butter on one slice of bread. So I've got my sun butter. Now I'm gonna find a tablespoon on my measuring spoons. So table, there's teaspoon and there's a tablespoon and the tablespoon is the really big one, but it also has the words. And if you don't have measuring spoons at home, you could just use a big soup spoon. That's about the same. So you can use anything that you might have at your house. So I'm gonna get my sun butter. I'm gonna get two tablespoons. One, I'm gonna use my knife. One tablespoon, oh, it's messy, that's fun. And then one more. And parents, let, let, your, let your child do the scooping. It's fun, and then we can count out loud. So how many did I put already? I have one, and now I have two. And I'm gonna put that down now. It says that I should spread it evenly over this slice of bread. So that's what I'm gonna do. And you can use, and again, kids, you can do this yourself. Doesn't it feel good when you can do something healthy for yourself and healthy for your family? Now you know you can make a snack for other people too. All right, so now I have my slice. Now I'm, it looks like I need to read my next instruction. It says, top the sunflower seed butter with four seasonal fruit slices by laying them in an even layer. So now I need to make my fruit slices. So again, we're gonna use apples. And um, adults, what I recommend is that you use your big adult knife. And when we're cutting, you're gonna actually be given access to a video on Friday um, for knife skills. So be looking for that, a uh, whole separate lesson. But for now, I'll just give you some quick pointers. 
You're, you want to keep an even surface. If I try to cut my apple this way, it's roly poly. So I want to make it stable. I want it to not roll around on me. So adults, if you want to take your big knife and cut off a nice slice of apple, um, and then if you were cutting more, you would then find the next flat surface, not this way, but this way, and we can cut more of our apple, okay? So adults, we're gonna have you make some nice slices. Now I'm again gonna find the flat side and put my apples down. And then depending on how comfortable you are with a knife, and if you've used one before or not, you can use a butter knife once you've got your apple cut from this real big apple. You can actually just take your butter knife and you can, you might have to push real hard, but you can slice your apple with a butter knife. Now I have two apple slices. You can also um, use these knives. These are plastic knives and you can just buy them online um, and have them delivered right to your home. Uh, just, just Google um, kid safe plastic knife and these will come up and they just have a little bit of a tooth on them uh, to make it easier. And so if you use sort of a sawing motion, you can cut pretty good slices with these. Uh, so that's another tool and then if you're if you have an older child and you've seen that they're good with the butter knife they've they've done really well with their plastic knife and they're practicing safe knife handling skills you could even upgrade them to one of these um these little paring knives and i think these are very helpful and they come with a nice cover and a case um and again you just want to practice safe knife skills which will have a video that you can download and then you can cut more slices as kids get comfortable with using knives. So those are our tips. And now I have plenty of fruit slices. So back to our instructions, we're gonna take four fruit slices and lay them in an even layer. Well, and when I use four, it's not quite enough for me because it doesn't cover my whole sandwich. So I'm gonna put more and that's okay. Even though we're learning to follow the instructions, you can also make up things as you go and you can't ruin your peanut butter sandwich. That's the fun part about cooking. If you are reading the instructions and you're following them exactly, and then you say, I want a fifth slice of apple. Well, that's totally fine because you're the cook and you're the food adventurer and you're the brave one. Uh, and if you said, you know what? I'm gonna try and make a double sandwich. I want raisins and apple slices. Well, again, your kitchen, your sandwich. You put those raisins on there. Okay, and that brings us to our very last instruction. Lay the second slice, there's that second slice. I was hoping there would be two pieces of bread. Lay the second slice of bread on top of the seasonal fruit slices. So, it looks like I have succeeded in making myself a sun butter and seasonal fruit sandwich. Mm -mm. Are you taking a bite too? Sticks to your tongue. All right. So I hope that you liked your sandwich. I hope that you found it tasty. Um, and I hope that you're making them for all of your family members. And I just want to remind you that you can find all of our recipes and all of our lessons on our website at foodliteracycenter.org slash curriculum. And so hopefully you remember a couple of key takeaways that at Food Literacy Center, we are food adventurers and we eat a fruit or a vegetable with every snack and meal. And today we learned how to add fresh fruit to our, um, something that we always eat, which is a peanut butter sandwich. So um, I would also like to point out that in our curriculum, at the very end, we have discussion and wrap up questions for adults. So kids, what did you learn today? Did you learn a new word? Did you learn a new word that starts with an R? Did you learn the word 
Recipe? What does recipe mean? It's instructions for cooking, right? It's instructions for making a food. Did you learn the word food adventurer? And what's a food adventurer? It's somebody who explores, right? Somebody who explores by trying new foods. And that's exactly what we did today. And then our next question is, how are you a food adventurer? Talk about that with your family. I was a food adventurer because I hadn't put raisins in my sandwich before. I've tried pears, I've tried bananas. This was the first time I tried raisins and it was really good. And then the next question is, what did you think about trying a new food today? You can do thumbs up, you can do thumbs down, or it's okay. And this is our polite way of letting folks know what we thought of the food that we tasted. And then our last question is, what are some words you could describe how your recipe tasted? How did it smell? Did it make a sound? My apples were crunchy. Did it have a feeling? The sun butter got stuck on the roof of my mouth and all over my tongue. Think about those, how your food made you feel. I hope that you'll join me. We're gonna be rolling out more lessons and more recipes. I would love to cook with you again. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being brave and thank you for being a food adventurer. You are watermelon wonderful. Bye.